One of our subscribers asked recently, how do you paint a pile of leaves? Well, you know what I'm going to do with this one, don't you? Let's see. Well, you know, if you've been watching our quick tips, when someone asks me how to paint something, I always have my same little speech. And that is, if you're trying to paint a pile of leaves, like you're trying to paint any image, chances are you're not going to be able to do it. What we learn to do as artists is to look at the image and see what is the shape of the image, what are the shapes that are in the images, what are the values that are in the images, what are the colors that are in, in the image. In other words, rather than paint the image itself, or rather than trying to paint the image itself, we're looking at what makes it, what makes it look the way it is. And when we can move away from looking at the image and look at what makes it look the way we see it, then we begin to get into the heart of things. So, what about a pile of leaves? Well, I found four photographs of piles of different kinds of piles of leaves and you can see they're really really different from each other so we can't, can't really say this is the formula for a pile of leaves but we can say this is one way to look for uh, how a pile of leaves could be uh, translated or could be interpreted so what are we seeing here now and when we look at this what are we seeing we're seeing first the first thing that hits my if I'm talking about the visual elements what are we seeing what are the visual elements line shape value color uh, direction size and so forth then what of those are we seeing most I'm seeing textures seeing textures we're seeing textures first but what's causing those textures the way we're seeing what's causing them is the light source so which way is the light coming the light source is coming in different direction from each one of them. So, and it's a different kind of light source. Uh, this one seems to be in a little bit more subtle light than this does. So you look for all those things, narrow it down. What is the shape? What is the shape? What do we have? Here we have kind of a cone shape. Here we have a more of a round shape. If it's a pile of leaves, you're going to have a shape. Here we have more of a round shape. Here it's kind of a combination of round and cone shape. Alright, so we have kind of a, a round shape. Now we could use any one of these to do the demonstration, but because this one's kind of funky, that's the one I want to use. So it also has in it the elements we need. Alright, so it has kind of a cone shape. The cone shape is kind of round. I'm just going to use my pencil here and say, alright, what is the shape? Here is the shape, pretty much the shape that I'm seeing of those leaves. That is the shape. Now what do we know about how light and shadow behave on a shape? If you don't know how light and beha uh, shadow behaves on the shape, I've got a free, uh, free little visual help for you. If you go to the website at dianemice.com, look in the menu and click on free stuff. And when you go there, I think it's on the top line of the free stuff, the free visual aids, uh, the, the aids we have available there, you'll find a diagram of light and shadow. Uh, it, it, there's a diagram that shows you how light and shadow behaves. And look what happens here. Now, it so happens that the, the light source in this diagram it's pretty much a, very similar to the light source we have here. The light source is coming from this direction as it is right there. And there it's a little bit more to the, to the back, but it's the same way. So you see what you have? We, have? we have a light area and we have a shadow area. That's the first consideration. All right. So what's the second thing? Once you locate the shape, you determine what the shape is you're looking at. And all these you can see specific shapes. What's the second thing you do? The second thing you do is you look for what's in shadow and what's not in shadow. Now, I always like to do it this way. I always like to take the subject and I'll just divide it uh, between, if we call that the terminated line, look here again at this, look here again at this little, uh, this little diagram I made for you. Wherever the, the light source uh, is, is shining on the surface, that's the not in shadow. And then every form, everything that has shape will begin to turn away from the light. And when it turns away from the light, we call that terminator. And so, and then the rest of it's in shadow. So, if you can find the terminator line, let's just go through this and find it. So, we see on this shape right here, and I'll try to make it dark enough in this pencil so that you can see, I'm going down 
to the terminated line, and then I go up in here, I see. Now, all right, so what does that tell me? It's a little bit more light there. It tells me that there's a little bit more of a pile of leaves up there. It's not just a straight cone, but it has a little bit of a dip in it. All right, so I go there like that, and then I come down the side of the shape like this, and I find it's kind of an irregular feeling terminator, but then I find that that terminator pretty much does like this. All this over here is in shadow. All this over here is not in shadow. So that's the first, that's the, the next thing to do. So follow those points. First of all, what is the shape? Second of all, where's the light source? What's the light source doing? What's in shadow? What's not in shadow? I haven't said anything about leaves yet, have I? I haven't said anything about texture even yet. Because the shape comes first. You get the shape first, you get the value next, then you get the texture. So I'm just going to give you a very, very brief uh, demonstration here. I'm not going to do the whole thing. We get very brief demonstration there now as to about the value and the texture. So in this particular case, oh, now we've got color within that. We've got what is the color we're looking at and what is the color that's in shadow and what's the color that's not in shadow. Well, we see that color kind of falls into a, a, a kind of a yellow orange, yellow orange, red orange uh, range. And so, so we see in shadow that color is a dark value. So I'll just pull right over here into this kind of orangey, red orange range. You could use burnt sienna here if you're if, if you're doing that. Um, it's not about necessarily the color in this in this um, this little quick tip for you. It's it's more about the, the way to think about it. So I'm going to add into that just a little bit of a ultramarine blue to get that more a shadow shade. Uh, we know that when things go into shadow when color goes into shadow. When, go, when color goes into shadow, that uh, part of the saturation of the color is subtracted out. And that if we, we use a complementary color to put into that, then we can get that feeling of shadow. So here, and what I would do is to uh, give kind of an underpainting, give kind of an underpainting here of just that whole shadow shape. Not trying to uh, do much more than show just the values I'm seeing. Just looking just for just for the values. And if those values get a little bit bluer in some places, I make them bluer in some places. If they get a little bit warmer in some places, a little bit more orange in some places, I make them a little oranger in some places. So all I'm looking for there is just the shadow shape. It gets a little bit oranger here. So a little bit more orange coming up in here, as you can see. So I'm following that right up to the terminator. Gets a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'm squinting my eyes pretty much as I'm doing this, and that helps too. So because right now all I'm concerned with is just that what is the overall value and what are those colors that appear in the overall value. So those are the questions you're asking yourself. Has nothing to do with leaves, not yet at least. So now if I'm squinting and I, I add, I add the, the I add more of the complement of whatever the color is, in this case it just happens to be uh, that uh, goldish color. I am adding more of the complement as I see these areas darker. You can see right here, you can almost see, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, just enough of it to show you. You can almost already see textures that remind you or resemble leaves. If you'll squint your eyes and just paint those values, just paint them the color that you see them, you will have that. Now, one way I have found very helpful over the years, a few years of painting, I found it very, very helpful when I set up colors on my palette to set them up in a value line. Now, if you can go to Quick Tip 19, I'll show you how to do that with a single uh, a single color. But uh, you can see here I've got ultramarine blue and I've gradated it um, up, uphill towards the light value with just white. And here I've got the Rembrandt Transparent Oxide Red. And what I've done with it is to give it more of the color. So I've, I've raised the value of it with a um, yellow Deep. And then added, begun to add white to that at middle value to take it down up. By doing that, I find the colors that I see right here. And I have those colors pretty much pre-mixed in that value line. And that enables me to just move into that and, and, and paint those colors as I see them without having to mix and mix and mix and guess. All right, enough of that. Now let's go to what's not in shop. How do you do that? How do you do what's not in shop? All right, when you take what's not in shadow, you squint at it, 
you find the value that you see. And it's always better because the night and shadow area usually will start. If you look at how it starts right here, it starts at that terminated line and that terminator at that terminated line it becomes a low light. It's in a half tone at that low light and it's right in here, right in here where we see the real textures of those leaves. That's where we see the real definition of the leaves. If you look in the dark area and just squint just at that dark area, you don't see the leaves so quick, so so sharply defined. If you look at where the light's hitting it so strongly, you don't see them so sharply defined. So if you subdue the definitions here and here and make those definitions a little sharper in that narrow area on either side of the terminated line, then that gives you the that will give you the, the definition of leaves. But for the moment, while we're setting up that knot and shadow area, here's what we're looking for. We're looking for just, if I squint my eyes, I'm looking for just those values. And what I will do here is I'll move in, I'll move into that. Let's move this here and just get this a little bit more neutralized. It's just right in there. All right, now, as I'm moving down, a little lighter, a little bit lighter. So if I'm moving down that's that terminator line, well, I didn't get that right on the terminator line. I'm just going to go ahead and do that now because I was so busy talking to you that I, didn't really, here we go, move it into the terminated line right there. That shadow area moved into the terminated. Now we go. All right, so I'll just go into that not in shadow color. What am I seeing? What is the color I'm seeing right there? And then I begin to put that color. Now, I also look at the values I'm seeing. Do I see a value pattern in there? I see a value pattern that goes something, a dark, darker pattern of not in shadow that goes something like this. And then I see a lighter pattern. I see a lighter pattern of knot and shadow that goes something like this. A lighter pattern that goes something like this. Kind of goes over like that and something like this. Now, if you will pay attention to the darker patterns and the lighter patterns that you see, I'm going to try to do the whole thing, just to pay attention to the lighter, lighter and darker patterns you see, you will begin to see an interpretation that feels very close to what you're painting, very close to the image you're painting. Within those is where you find the definition of leaves. Not just leaves, but any anything that you're painting, any image you're painting, you can follow this procedure. You can follow this process. Now what we'll be doing to show you just a little bit, I'm not going to do the whole thing. Uh, what are we looking for here in that terminator area? Now I'm going to focus on the terminator area right here. What we see there we'll see the feeling of some leaf shapes and then they'll cross right over into the low light. You already begin to feel that sense of a pile of leaves right there. Coming on down, the term, you just come on down the terminated line and the same thing, it's a little bit lighter in the shadow area. It's a little bit darker in the not in shadow area. So you, you can use the same, <laughs> you can use the same value of color well, it depends on what you're looking at, in fact. Okay, what we find here, a little bit lighter in the not in shadow area. Bring that same value over. It will be a little bit darker in the, what did I say, in the, in, in the not in shadow area. A little bit lighter in the in shadow area. A little bit darker in the not in shadow area as you bring it over like that. Now, so you would just come on down like this. You could do some of that in here. Now you can go begin to kind of where you see a little bit lighter, where they see them a little bit lighter, you begin to kind of put a little bit lighter and use the brush stroke, use the brush stroke that seems to be consistent with the image you're doing. Now, a, a, <laughs> I'm not going to say a good brush stroke for leaves, but what you look for uh, when you have those sharp edges like you see in there, you'll know then that a flat brush would be better. If it's a small image, and this way it's not so small that we're further away from it, but you can see the image is here, um, then use a smaller brush. If it's a larger image, use a larger brush. And then just use, uh, use the brush to shape the image. And so if I'm doing leaves, if I'm doing leaves, I will use my brush. I will focus on the shape I'm looking at, and then I'll use my brush and the way I twist it in my hand to make those shapes. So, and these are the kinds of shapes that will, that you appear, that will appear along this terminator line. The, the, the only other thing I can, uh, that I want to show you to finish this up is that you continue to build it that way. I've shown you how to start general, how to look at the shade, 
how to look at the values, how to look and paint the shape and the values, and how to begin to develop this actually the textures. And then from this point, what you would do is to go and put the put the finishing touches. Now where you see the lights lighter, like right in here, then you'll make brush strokes, and these brush strokes will be more closely to the leaf shape. So you just look at these little areas. Once you have the values set and the colors set, then you look at the the accent areas. So what do you see? I see a shape there that looks like a leaf, and if I have practiced a stroke that I find that works for me to look like leaf, then like the leaf I'm looking at, then I'll just go there and I'll make that little accent to make it look like leaves. And I'll find wherever I find them, but if you overdo that, <laughs> it's like you're doing, overdoing anything. You know, you put too much sugar in a in cake frost and it's going to be too sweet to eat. So, so uh, go lightly. Go lightly. You don't, you don't need much of it. Now you will never find um, within the shadow area, you'll never find that line to slide. So if you see lighter areas in the shadow area, they're always going to be middle, middle value. Now the only exception to that, as I never find, if something happens to be reaching out and catching light, you will find it. But in something like this, I don't see anything reaching out and catching light. So anything that you define in the, in the leaf brush stroke or the brush stroke that you develop to interpret the leaves that you're looking at, anything that you find in the in shadow area are going to be middle value. So you can you move into the in shadow area where you see the lighter areas that are catching reflected light and you begin to use that stroke to get the middle value. You see almost half here a pile of leaves. I hope that you can take that uh, that little process further and then you'll find out that this is really um, the best way to go about painting anything is to look at its shape, look at how the light's hitting it, what are the shadow areas, what are the not in shadow areas, where the terminator line is, look at what's going on there, take it one step at a time. You don't try to paint the whole thing at one time, but look at one step at a time looking for the shape. You don't need to be looking at the values when you're looking for shape. Then look for the value differences. What's in shadow, what's not in shadow. You don't need to be looking at texture when you look for that. You don't even need to be looking for color when you're doing that. You're just looking for shadow. Then you can start looking for color. What colors do you see in the shadow area? What colors do you see in the not in shadow areas? You apply those colors and then you begin to look for textures. And that is the differences of the values within those color areas of shadow and not in shadow. And the very last thing, find that brush stroke that interprets what you're looking at. And that brush stroke will go in very few areas, but it will go in just enough so that you can interpret in your painting whatever it is that you're looking at. And that's all there is to it. So if you found this quick tip helpful, um, if you have something that you would like me to give a quick tip about something that's, that's puzzling you and you'd like for me to air it out for you, just leave a comment right down here and we'll put it on the schedule. And don't forget, we've got those wonderful vi uh, video tutorials on DianeMines.com. Every one of them is an, at least an hour long. Every one of them explores a single subject about composing paintings. Um, go take a look at the titles. You don't have to, you don't have to spend any money at all. Or if you see a title that appeals to you, you might find that you can uh, download that and find it helpful. And there's your quick tip.